In Thomas Edison's The Crime of Carelessness, we see a reenactment of a real-life fire in the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory in New York, where 146 people died due to the negligence of an employee that lit a cigarette in a no-smoking zone. The tragedy taking place here shows some eerie similarities to the burning of Cinema Rex, the event Shara Mokri's 2020 film Careless Crime is based on. But in comparison to Edison's film, Careless Crime is a little bit less straightforward in its storytelling. Just, just slightly. During the film, we mostly follow our main character Tagbali, who is named after one of the actual arsonists of Cinema Rex. He needs his medicine to prevent him from committing arson. You say this? To get the drug he's looking for, he has to go to a dealer at a film museum. After going through a pitch black corridor, Tagbali finds him dressed as a puppet and he tells him he will give him his medicine after delivering a package. When we see Tagbali later again in the film, he meets up with three older men and they're planning to set Cinema Rex on fire. After a first attempt fails, they try it again during the screening of a film called... Jeffy. Um, Careless Crime. Yeah, not the same Careless Crime as we're watching currently, no, this is where it gets meta. It's uh, another movie called Careless Crime. And this is also where the second plotline comes in. This Careless Crime, so the film within the film Careless Crime, tells the magical realistic story of a couple of soldiers who investigate a call about a missile that got stuck in the desert. Eventually they end up in the woods where they meet two film obsessed women who are planning an outside screening of the deer. The soldiers stick around with them for a while to find out what happened and in the meantime learn some new neat little magic tricks. <laughs> One of the soldiers in particular, however, is quite suspicious of the girl's interest in illusions and instead wants to focus on solving the missile problem and find out why he's incapable of seeing his own reflection anymore. The place itself seems to have some curious magical properties, with a tiny lake that seems to have no reflection, just like the soldier himself. To find a cure for his condition, he eventually goes to visit a witch that lives close to the lake, but sadly he ends up empty-handed. Right from the very start of the film, the film foreshadows the disaster is about to ensue by showing us that clip of Crime of Carelessness. And this tension is kept throughout the film, following the events that lead up to the fire. The first attempt failing, <laughs> the Cinema Rex visitors watching the deer, even recreating the details mentioned in the court case of the real fire, lingering on them. I don't turn off our drums, yeah. 500 Eventually, the arsonist doused the place with lighter fluid and paint thinner. Takbali lights a broom on fire. The music becomes more irregular and unhinged until... He... doesn't... burn the place. Huh. Thomas Edison's Crime of Carelessness reenacts the real-life disaster of the Triangle Shirtwaist Fire in New York, where 146 people died due to the negligence of an employee that lit a cigarette in a no- Wait. Wait, that's not true, actually. It is quite interesting that Shara Mokri decided to present Edison's film like this. The film states the factory burning down all came down to the mistake of one poor worker ignoring obvious instructions. Sure, the owner did not follow up on his own safety guides and, yeah, an inspector overlooked the fact that safety measures weren't taken seriously at all. But in the end, the worker is the one who suffers the most. The worker is the one who loses his job. He is the one who has to leave his fiancé behind because he can't provide her with the life she deserves. That is, of course, until his generous boss decides to forgive him for his actions and inviting the worker to work again at his new factory instead. And they lived happily ever after. Ah, capitalism.
If it seems like this is a piece of unapologetic corporate propaganda, well, that's because it is. NAM, the organization that paid Edison to make the film in the first place, is short for National Association of Manufacturers. And they had reasons enough to make the fire seem as if it was caused by just an unfortunate accident by a worker. The owners of Triangle had a notorious reputation for neglecting both worker and fire safety. Although they did not set the fire to the building themselves, the deaths caused by the Triangle factory fire cannot simply be blamed on a single cigarette. Compared to Edison's production, which turns a complicated situation into a very straightforward one, Careless Crime does the exact opposite. The Cinema Rex fire is often regarded as one of the inciting incidents of the Iranian Revolution that overthrew Iran's monarchy. <laughs> Since the cinema showed Hollywood movies from time to time, arsonists are labelled by the general public as revolutionaries who started a fire out of protest to the Shah and Western culture. However, the details of the incident are not that clear-cut, if you look into it. In interviews, Mokri talks at length about how, even though this is supposed to be such a crucial moment in Iran's history, what actually happened, and why, is even to this day up for discussion. After the incident, fingers were pointed to several groupings as the perpetrators, not just anti-monarchy revolutionaries. The testimony of the only surviving arsonist, Hossein Takbalitse, did not clear anything up since it was contested in court due to him being a recovering drug addict. So, what do we know for certain? Well, it was done by four men, and unfortunate mistakes were made by the employees that turned that night into a nightmare. This is the perspective Mokri chooses to tell his story, the one where there is no master plan at all. Simple facts. This constant state of uncertainty is a motive we find throughout the film. Basically, every conversation is questioning something. The viewer ends up just as confused and unsure as the characters. It does not help that the film's time and space flow together seamlessly, showing different perspectives of the same scenes at completely different times in the film. Takbali's accomplices especially seem stuck in time, being much, much older than him, as if they are reliving the past during the present. So. If Mokri wanted to tell his perspective of the Cinema Rex fire, showing how history is more ambiguous and things are not as clear-cut as it might seem, why does it not end in the actual burning of the cinema? What if it was never about the fire at all? چند وقت میخوری اینو؟ چند ساله؟ تو کارلیس خوبه آخه؟ توالت خوبه؟ In Shara Mokri's careless crime, the main character Takbali enters an apothecary to find a medicine that could cure him from his arson addiction. When he first asks for the medicine, they cannot help him, so he leaves. and then immediately goes back in. This time, however, a bright, intrusive light starts appearing behind him, which follows him from that point onwards. At first, I assumed it might be a way to show Takbali's withdrawal symptoms, but can you even cure arson through medicine? Why does he receive the medicine from a man dressed as a puppet? For being based on true events, the film takes extreme liberties by introducing a lot of magical elements not only in the careless crime within a careless crime, the soldier version. Yeah. 
من وش سر کارو بده آقا سر کار چیه چشتونو بند آقا چشتونو بندین تمرکز یه ذره این ورسه but also into the main film itself. But then it kind of dawned on me how the bright light kind of looked like a film projector, the same one Tagbali and his accomplices walk past several times during the film. Similarly, when he tries to find the man that can give him his medicine, he has to walk through a long black corridor as if he is making his way to the seats at a cinema. <laughs> So, hear me out. What if Takbali's story, after entering the apothecary a second time, is just another film instead of a recreation of reality? I know it sounds far fetched, but try to let me explain this. <laughs> Careless crime breeds cinema, not only because it's based on a tragedy involving a cinema and the fact that it has a film playing in a film, but characters talk about film all the time. <laughs> I don't think it's a coincidence that Takbali has to go to a film museum to find a cure for his condition. There is no medicine against arson. But maybe there is a way to learn about the mistakes in the past by re-watching them. Not only does Mokri use film language to convey his perspective of the fire, he reflects on it, exposing the trickery behind the illusion quite literally with a puppet man who we know is fake. But also through the entirety of the careless crime soldier story. Takbali's story is very similar to the soldiers, since both of them trying to find ways to deal with guilt and reflect on it both symbolically and literally. The soldier tries to find answers with a witch who hands him magic rope that is supposed to give him the clarity he needs, but he ends up empty-handed after it's revealed it's nothing more than just a simple trick. The soldier does not believe in trickery. Even when the two women show him his team magic tricks, he refuses to get involved. Not willing to see what the illusions can achieve makes him incapable to learn from them. At first glance, this seems a very cynical perspective on the power of illusion and in turn of cinema. But as our two magicians state, the message was not meant for the soldier. <laughs> When Takbali re-enters the apothecary, he receives a small yellow note on where to find his medicine, which he takes out of his pocket at the end of the film, right before he decides to do nothing at all. We did see that note before. <laughs> A film is the thing that makes Takbali think about what he is doing. A film is revealed to be an active character in Careless Crime, following Takbali and the other characters, whether as a silent follower 
or a projector peeking through. The film is literally watching history unfold before its eyes. Mokri does not just show a more neutral perspective on the events taking place, it shows cinema's perspective on them and the impact it has on its audience. <laughs> The tricks were not able to convince the soldier at the end, but that does not mean Tagbali is not able to learn from them. So he ends up in front of Cinema Rex, confronted with a choice, willing to learn and rise from the ashes, or is history just doomed to repeat itself? Careless crime is not a reenactment of a tragedy, but a love letter to the power of cinema. So why did he not burn down Cinema Rex? Well, because despite all those fancy trickery and illusions, in the end, cinema is all about sending a message.